Hello, I'm Mark from GCO Tutor. So in this video, we're gonna carry on the series where we're gonna make this part by programming G-code. And this week, we're going to do the finishing pass. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. So we're gonna start off this sequence by an operator's note. It just says finish and turn, so we know what the sequence is. Now operator's notes are in brackets, and before that we have our search function, the N2. So that means we're using tool two when we are cutting this, so all our numbers are the same, so it's nice and easy to search. So this is my safety line. Now, all safety lines are different, and I've covered this in more depth in the previous lesson. So if you want to learn more about this safety line, pop over to the Ruffin uh, lesson in this series, and you'll see more about it there. Now, this is the tool I was talking about, T2. So T2, O2, Tool 2, and Datum Table Position 2, Offset 2, etc. So it's calling Tool 2 and all that tool information as well. And MO6 does a tool change, rotates our turret, puts the tool in the center line. So we're using a spindle clamp again this time. So the machine will not exceed 3,400 RPM because we've told it not to with this G50, our spindle clamp G code. So G96 is our constant surface cutting speed. Um, and that's why we use a G50 to make sure that the spindle doesn't exceed a set amount because this will go up to infinite speeds as we approach the center line if we do not. So as we go smaller and smaller in diameter, the spindle is gonna speed up faster and faster until it gets to 3,400 RPM, then it's not gonna go any faster no matter how smaller we go. Now MO3 turns on our spindle in the clockwise direction. If we got our tools loaded upside down, we would use MO4. Next up is our first rapid move. So we're moving to the start position of where we can safely remove material. So we're not cutting any material in this move because it is rapid. And we're coming in to just above the stock bar size and uh, 40 felt off the face of the part. And we're turning on the coolant. So with our tool in place there, we can then switch over to a feed command, G01. And we're gonna feed in slowly to the front face of that part. Just in case there's any material there, there shouldn't be, because this is a finishing pass, we've already roughed down the profile, but we're always best to be cautious. So we're coming in slowly. So as we're setting up, we can keep an eye on that, make sure everything is correct. And it looks like it's in position to face off the front of this part. Where it's coming in slow, we can see if we've made any mistakes with our tooling, our setup, our tool data, uh, et cetera. It gives us that opportunity to stop the machine because we can see mistakes quite easily if we're coming in slow to this position. So once we're in that position, I'm then gonna face off. So we're coming down, and this time I'm coming down to 10 thousandths of an inch past the center line. Much more, um, much better. We don't wanna go past that center line too much. If we go past too much, we're gonna break the tool because the material is spinning the wrong way a second we go past that center line. So we just wanna remove any pips if the tool is not perfectly on center. Of course, I'm sure your tools are perfectly on center. Next up, we're gonna wrap it back to the start position again. So that's the material faced off and that's our finishing pass. So that should be a nice clean finish and very flat for dimensional accuracy. So with our tool back to its start position and a safe position there, just away from the part, we can then start our finishing sequence, our finishing cycle. So for that, we use G70. So G70 is our finishing sequence. And because we've already written the profile, we don't need to do it again. We can easily call that profile again by using a subroutine. So the P100Q200 refers back to the previous video when we done the roughing sequence when I wrote that profile. So it knows where the profile is. It's gonna search back in the program to where it sees N110 and read that section of the program until it reads N220 and then it's gonna come back to the line below our G70. So with our profile done, at that point, it's now cut our entire profile again in a finishing pass. Now we can wrap it back to our safe working distance, slightly larger than the stock bar size and away from the front face of our part. So with that all done, we can then just call upon our machine datum, our G53, and that's usually where our tool change is. So going to X0, Z0 on our G53 should take us back to our tool change position if your machine is set up correctly, or at least set up the same as mine. And MO9 turns off our coolant. MO5 turns off our spindle. 
G97 puts the machine back into RPM mode. So we're now controlling the spindle with RPM again and not constant surface cutting speeds. And then finally, M01. So we have the option to stop the machine with our optional stop here, just to check, make sure everything is fine before we move on to the next sequence. So that's how I write my finishing sequence. I use subroutines that calls upon the profile that we wrote previously in the roughen sequence. And everything else is pretty much the same as, as the roughen sequence, apart from we don't need to state our profile because we're using that G70 there. Okay, so my name's Mark and I'm GCO Tutor. And you can find out more about GCO programming, CAD CAM, machine shop, maths, and manual machine processes over on my website, gcotutor.com where I have a range of free articles and some paid courses to help you in your career.